but speaking of the title, so last week on the program, we had that rather uh, uh, heated exchange between Punk and Moxley, and then they came out and got in a fight again, and we forgot to mention that um, that they had announced toward the end of the program last week, F*** it, we ain't going to wait for the pay-per-view where you might have to pay to see this. We're going to put the interim title versus the real title on the line between Moxley and Punk next week on free television. And everybody at that point thought, what if what is the matter with these people? And we did too, because why would you give that away? Except it it's not like anybody wanted to see it anyway. We've talked about the fact that this was botched horribly when Tony decided to put the belt on Moxley, the interim title, when Punk was out. It should have been a heel. It should have been the hottest heel you could get that could crow and fucking brag the whole time that Punk was gone and take advantage of people so that Punk would have a dragon to slay, a wrong to right, a hill to climb, something to come back for and triumph that people would universally be on his side rather than a split audience dueling chance like they had here in this match. Let's go Moxley, CM Punk. Some of these idiots were actually saying all the words together. Let's go Moxley, CM Punk. Because it's just a thing to do. They don't care who wins now. Especially when you split their fucking affections. So, he has an idiot for an interim champion that is totally doesn't fit what Punk needed to come back to. And obviously, he had, Punk had to be aware of that. So then they they shoot an angle, and then they decide to bring the pay-per-view main event ahead a week to free television. And I'm thinking, what the fuck are they thinking? There's somebody's lost their mind somewhere. But then I realize, if this is what they intended to do, they couldn't have made this the main event on pay-per-view, because people would have set seats on fire in three minutes. And at the same point, a lot of people have been waiting to hear me say, oh, he's going to tear this apart. And I might still tear it apart a little bit here, but they're doing something, and it's it involves CM Punk. So unless one of two things happen, unless CM Punk just said, you know what, I made a fucking mistake, you guys are fucking hopeless, I don't want to be involved in this, I didn't want to come back and do bad television, stick this belt up your ass and I'm going home. Then in that case, it makes sense they did what they did. There's one other way that this makes sense with Punk being involved in it if he doesn't want to tell them to stick it up their ass, if he still wants to try to help this company, then I don't want to break the the bubble. I don't want to come out and say this is what they're going to do because if they do do it, then what they did on television makes perfect sense. But let's just say this. Let's just say if Punk has re-injured his bad foot, he probably ain't going to be wrestling at the United Center in Chicago. Now, that's going to hurt their live crowd in Chicago because those people wanted to see CM Punk because it's his hometown. And that's probably the one place where the dueling chance would have been reduced to a minimum because even Punk would have been the raging favorite over Plumber Moxley, but it still wouldn't have been like an actual real heel to come back and beat. And you had to think that that had to set sideways with Punk to begin with, that he was going to be put in a position to come back in his triumphant debut in his hometown. He's wrestling an alleged babyface, even though Moxley has no idea how to be a babyface. He's presented as such. So... You get, you rip the Band-Aid off the scab or whatever, get it over with. Nobody gave a shit to see Punk versus Moxley, so get it over with on free television and figure out some way that you don't have to have that match on pay-per-view. And then I don't know. Maybe if the plumber was to run his fucking yap and issue an open challenge, then some heel with heat that makes people feel something could come out of nowhere and win that fucking belt during Punk's absence while he's re-injured on his bad foot 
And then Punk would have something to come and win back and right a wrong and take away the most prized possession in the company from some asshole who was only using it for his own selfish gain and didn't deserve it. Then you might have a wrestling story to sell tickets and pay-per-views and things. But if only Punk was involved in the decision-making, I would think that's maybe where they're going. But since these other amateur dipshits are involved, I don't know what the fuck's going to happen. Because it was this fucked up to begin with, so... So there's what we think. Either Punk said, you know what, fuck it, I've tried, you people aren't worth it. <laughs> I can't teach you anything. You're going to run this thing into the ground, I'm going home. Or he said, you know what, you have fucked this up massively and we need to take control over it somehow. And if we have to piss people in Chicago off, Mama says it bees that way sometimes for the sake of the future. Because otherwise this made no sense. For the people who've been living under a rock, they have the interim title versus title match. They introduce Moxley and Punk. They lock up. Moxley gets a little on Punk. Punk gets a little on Moxley. Punk goes to throw a roundhouse kick, sells his left foot, which was the one that he injured, I guess, and got operated on, goes down. Moxley sees what's happening. Punk staggers to his feet. Moxley clotheslines him gets on top of him and hits those shitty, phony, stupid-looking elbows. But apparently, even though they look bad, they also hurt because at one point, Punk had to get his hand in there like, you fucking idiot! You just hit me in the jaw. And then Moxley gave Punk two of his double-arm... Are they suplexes? Are they DDTs? They started out as a DDT, then he, he puts... Minoru Suzuki down like a Fabergé egg. This was kind of in the middle. And one, two, three in three minutes. And the Twitter blew up. And it's like, what is this, the end of the company? This is ridiculous. What are they fucking doing? And it doesn't make any sense unless they're just deciding we've completely fucked this thing up and we're going to start from scratch and we're going to re-rack everything. So they maybe they just got it out of the way. But otherwise, I have no thought what the fuck is going on here. Do you? Let me first apologize. Julio and the gang are outside taking care of their duties. But I believe this is part of a series of events leading into the pay-per-view. I have faith in everything CM Punk has done in AEW. So far, has been great. So I have faith in CM Punk. I doubt this would be the way it was if there wasn't a meaning behind it, whether or not we recognize it yet or not. But I'm going to go with the belief that they're building up to something. He's doing business with Moxley. This is different than everything with the drama with CM Punk and, you know, the whole Cucamonga camp. And or, and or hang nail page. Well, he's part of, he's part of, I mean, look. Yeah. He wasn't, uh, he wasn't around here the other night was he no he wasn't there who knows if he's suspended but you know it's omega the bucks adam page excalibur and various flunkies all over the place who got jobs for no good reason that's the group cm punk's not really dealing with that he's dealing with moxley he's friends with moxley's wife i'm sure cm punk was doing business here whether or not this was the right thing or the right way right way to use cm punk i guess time will tell i am dead against the way john moxley's used i know they have fans who like him and I've brought this up before. It's ironic that CM Punk comes out the cult of personality because John Moxley's really the one who <laughs> capitalizes on there being a cult of personality because his work in the ring ain't good. I'm sorry. There's no excuse. People are going to go, oh, I like his matches. They're not good. The blows, whether it's the punches, which we saw in the brawl with P CM Punk, or the elbows, which we've seen over and over and over again, look like shit. And if they're hurting the guy too, there, there's a double negative. And his promos just, they come across to me as phony baloney, to use a Roddy Piper phrase. <laughs> they come across to me, uh, or actually, I think that was Tony Clifton I'm thinking of. Uh, it comes across to me as just, I don't believe him. I don't believe in John Moxley, and he does the fucking Bez walk from Happy Mondays. I don't believe in him, and I, I know they have a lot of fans who really like him, and they were chanting for him and Punk, and like you said, the same people were chanting both, which is 
if there's any example of what the modern wrestling fan who goes to AEW is like, that's the perfect example right there, the fan chanting both. But I'm not a big fan of Moxley as the world champion, but I think this is all, this all has to be building to something more than likely at the pay-per-view, I would imagine. We shall hope. Uh, but then before we get to the main event of and the And where did Regal go? Regal walked in, they showed Moxley. This time when he was walking in the bowels of the building, Regal was next to him. And then yeah. by the time Moxley got out there, Regal was gone. Where did he go? He got lost in the parking lot when Moxley had to go outside so he could come back in. Maybe he got picked up by an Uber. I'm not sure. He's my least favorite wrestler in wrestling right now because he's all over the TV and his matches are always terrible and his personality just... I just don't think... Eh. I know a lot of people like him, but I don't get it with Moxley at all. At all. 